car, don't touch that dial. Listen to... <laughs> Sunday afternoon is the time for a man to relax, do a little reading, and make his plans for the week. In the Bumstead home this Sunday, Dagwood is relaxing, reading, and so far hasn't made a single plan for the coming week. Dagwood, you've been reading the Sunday paper for two solid hours. Yeah, well, you've been knitting all the time, dear, just doing knitting. But I can talk while I knit. Yeah, the last time I talked to you while you were knitting, you made a sleeveless sweater with an extra armhole over my stomach. <laughs> Stop reading and talk with me a little. Now, oh, Bondi, dear, in the Sunday paper is a great American institution. It has lots of valuable information in it. <laughs> Look at this big story in the magazine section. Look at this. Well, that's an interesting title anyway. Mm -hmm. How to get a million dollars without stealing it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, listen to this. The world is the richest place you could be. Where else could you be? Yeah. Man is surrounded by endless and untold wealth. And it all belongs to somebody else. Hey, let me see the rest of it. Yeah, that. here. Let's see. It says, the seeds are filled with billions of dollars worth of gold. All you have to do is find out how to recover it. Mm -hmm. Bend a piece of wire into something useful, and society will reward you with millions. Mm -hmm. it says, the earth is carpeted with valuable flowers and plants, ah. and the air teems with rare insects. Some of them worth a year's salary to a working man. Yeah. Uh, look, look here. Look at they that. have photographs of some of their rare yeah. insects and plants in full color. Look at that. Ah, uh, Blondie, they just couldn't make that up, you know. I guess you're right. Uh, Blondie. Yes, dear. Would you be mad at me if I became a millionaire? Huh? <laughs> Maybe. But I'd get over mm, it. Good. <laughs> I think I'll go down to my workshop in the basement right now. What for? I'm going to get to work on my first million. Say, Mom, where's Pop? He's down in the basement, Alexander. You mustn't disturb him. Why, is he sleeping? <laughs> no, he's busy making a million dollars. Gosh, again? Well... He read an article in the Sunday paper that said every man can be a millionaire. And now he wants to be one. Maybe we'll all be rich tomorrow. I'm glad that article didn't say every man could jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. We might all be orphans tomorrow. I know. Where is the Sunday paper? In the living room. Cookie, let's take it up to my room and look at it. Maybe we'll make our first million before Pop does. <laughs> Blondie, uh, how do you like this? Well, frankly, I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. What is it? it um, well, uh, you see, I just bent a little piece of wire into something that's useful, so society will reward me with a million dollars. Now, when you look at it like this, it's a hairpin. That's an awfully big hairpin. Yeah, but turn it this way and it's a barbecue fork. <laughs> well, well, will wonders never cease. What's this little gadget on it? Oh, that's a special invention. Hey, yeah. It's so you can scratch your feet without taking your shoes off. <laughs> Dagwood, yeah. I don't think society is ready for that yet. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to... Uh, oh, wait a minute, Blondie. There's a fly in the room. Oh, wait till I get a magazine and I'll kill it. Now, be <laughs> careful, Dagwood. Somebody always gets yeah. hurt when you start one of those big game hunts. Yeah, look out. Look out, look out, Blondie. Now, ah, ha, he's on the lamp. Hey, hey, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look at him. Yeah? He looks like one of the rare insects in that newspaper story. Oh, go on. No, 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 no kidding. Shh, don't scare him away. Look, look. Look, look at that. He's got a green head, blue legs, a yellow body, and red wings. My, oh, boy, my oh, boy. Dagwood, you're right. This is the rarest insect in the world. How rare? About $2,000 oh. rare. I'll go right out and get an empty jar. Keep your eyes on. Yeah, I am, Blondie. What's he doing now? Uh, washing his feet. <laughs> hey, now, 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 look, he's sort of polishing his wings. I hope he doesn't polish off any of that $2,000. Here's the jar, Dagwood. Okay. See if you can catch him in it. Now, don't hurt him. Yeah. Be careful. Okay. Here goes now. Yeah. 
I guess you're really convinced now that he's a real valuable fly, aren't you, huh? No, but we can't afford to take any chances at $2,000 a fly. Yeah. Oh, here he comes, dear. Oh, there he goes, dear. Oh, here, fly. Come on, fly. <laughs> Blondie, how do you call a fly? Oh, well, maybe you buzz for him. A buzz? Well, I'll try anything once. <laughs> I broke my buzzer, I think. Come <laughs> here, here, fly. Come on, little flyzy wisey. It's... Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Over there. Huh? Over there by the door. Holy smoke, he's crawling under it. He'll get away. Blondie, I'm going to chase him. But, Dad, would he, he probably really isn't the fly you were reading yeah, about. Yeah, there he goes. I'll see you later. Here, fly. Here, fly. Oh, doggone it. He keeps just out of my reach. Hey, fly. Let's both of us rest for five minutes, then start all over again, huh? Oh, he's going into a house now. Oh, yeah. It's Mr. Diddy's his house. Oh, boy, now I'll get him. Oh, geez, I got him. I got him. I got him in a jar. Two thousand red and green dollars with blue feet. Look, Cora, I found him lying in the front room, holding a fruit jar in his hand. Uh, Julius, he looks like he's half dead. He looks the same way at the office. <laughs> Mom said, wake up. Uh, Julius, don't slap his face so hard. Well, I gotta bring him to, and I might as well enjoy myself. <laughs> <sighs> oh, hello, Mr. Diddy. Hello, Mrs. Diddy. Dagwood, stop shaking my hand and tell me what happened. Hey, what? Oh, excuse me. Well, I... Phew, I fell down and I was too weak to get up. I chased a fly all the way from my house to your house. You chased a fly all the way over here? Yeah. Bumstead, isn't that carrying a personal grudge too far? <laughs> you know, I... I was trying to capture him, Mr. Giddies. I don't see how you did it. After all, this fly has a bigger brain than you. Right. Well, he's worth more money than I am, too. This fly happens to be worth $2,000. I wouldn't give you two cents for it. Yeah. Not even if he could dance on the ceiling and write out Arthur Murray in smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just look in the jar, see? <laughs> It has a green head and blue legs, a yellow body, and red wings. Look so at what? It. I've got a sport coat just like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is the rarest insect in the world. The goomus fly. The hummus fly? The goomus fly. <laughs> huh? Oh, Bob says. You don't expect me to bite on that one. Yeah, uh, well, don't worry. I'm taking it home. And if, and if you don't believe it's worth that much, just look in the magazine section of the Sunday paper. Oh, sure. Uh, well, so long. And thanks for the use of your house. Uh, it's a wonderful fly trap. Hey, look, Blondie, I got it. Oh, good for you, Dagwood. Yes, sir. There he is, the good old Goomas fly. Blondie, you know something? You're looking at $2,000. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Say, Dagwood, uh, the fly may be worth $2,000. Yeah. But who is going to pay that for him? Hey, 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 that's right. Who is going to buy it? I wouldn't pay that for a little fly. But, say, why don't you call the paper and ask them who wants it? Uh, oh, okay, that's a good idea. After all, they said somebody wanted it, though. Sure. Yeah, and I'll also tell them that uh, if they want to interview a couple of celebrities, the fly and I will be home all day. There's the phone again, Mom. I'll get it, but it's probably for you, Dad. Yeah, okay, then you get it, dear. Boy, it's been ringing all day. Ever since that story about your catching the fly was in the morning's paper. Hello? Yes, just a minute. 
Who's it for, dear? It's for you, Frank Buck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Hello. Uh, this is Bring Them Back Alive in a Jar of Bumstead speaking. <laughs> huh? What? Oh. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, okay, yeah. I'd be glad to see you, Professor. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Who was it, Dagwood? Well, a professor from some college. He's interested Ooh. in the fly. Huh. I hope he brings the money to buy it. Oh, there's the door again. Maybe you ought not to let anybody else see the fly for a while. Uh, uh, why, Alexander? Oh, gosh, I don't know, Pop. I might look at it so hard they wear it off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's likely to happen. Oh, sir. Oh, oh what a joy of fly break. Oh, <laughs> I think it's Mr. Diddy's. Well, I think I'll go upstairs and read for a while. Yeah, yeah I'm coming, Mr. Diddy's. I'll open the door, Dagwood. Come in, Mr. Diddy's. Thank you. What did you want, Mr. Diddy's? I wanted to have a little friendly talk with Deadwood in private. <laughs> well, really, excuse me. I think I'd better take the Goomas fly along with me. Oh, Blondie, don't you trust me? Yeah, what do you think, Mr. Diddy's? Mm. <laughs> I think not. Mm. Bum said old Buddykins. Yeah. I just came over to see how our fly was doing. Oh, it's just that, that, that our fly. Well, after all, it's really my fly. Mm. You caught in my house. And anything that's in my house belongs to me. Mm. I was there, and I don't belong to you, Mr. Diddy's. <laughs> Because I don't want you. <laughs> now hand over that fly. Nothing doing. I wouldn't part with that fly any more than he would part with his goomas. <laughs> um, sir, uh, I'm going to give you one more chance. I don't want it. Okay, you're fired. Okay, send my two weeks pay over in the morning. I can't afford it, so you're hired again. Thank you, but I want a raise. Nothing doing. Okay, I quit. Fine, now you don't get the two weeks pay. Yeah, how did I get mixed up in this? <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to... I'm going to be a millionaire anyway. That's all right with me. Because that fly is mine. And I'll sue you for every speck you've got. <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. Diddy's, it's you again. Yes. Bumstead, this is my final offer. Mm -hmm. Give me a half interest in that fly and I'll hire you back again. Here's my final answer. Ha-ha! Goodbye now. <laughs> Bumstead, uh, this is my final, final offer. Make me an offer. <laughs> Beat it before I stick the dogs on you. That's the best offer I've had today. Hey, Mom. What is it, Alexander? There's a man coming up the front walk. He's wearing a beard. Oh, I'll bet it's Mr. Diddy's wearing a disguise. Oh, boy, will I fix him. Watch what happens when I pull that beard off of him, oh, boy. Now, be careful, dear. Yeah, don't worry. How do you do? I'm from the Nature History Museum, and I am Professor Gustav Hegelmeyer. Okay. Yeah, and I'm Professor Einstein. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you, Professor, but you don't look like your picture. Yeah. Well, I've dyed my hair. <laughs> Just like that you glued on this beard. Ooh, <laughs> oh, 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 my. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I, excuse me, Professor. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Bumstead. You are married to this man here? Yes. What a pity, a nice young girl like you throwing away her life. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Professor, about... I don't blame you. Uh, well, you see, I, I thought you were somebody else, Professor. I could be. Won't you come in? Thank you. Where, where is the goobies fly? Yeah, it's over on the table in that jar there. Well, I guess now we'll find out that the fly isn't really the goomas fly. That's just what I was oh, thinking. Oh, it's a real thing, all right. Mr. Bumstead, do you have my glasses? No. That's funny, neither do I. <laughs> but no matter, I can see well enough. <gasps> oh, 
yes, yes, it is the goo, Miss Fly. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, my goodness. Not really. Gosh, I still don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, well, I know it. I know it all the time. Oh, yes, yes, it has the blue legs, the yellow body, the red wings, and the green head. No other fly in the world can make that statement. <laughs> Professor, are you quite sure that this is a goo, Miss Fly? Positive. There is no question about it. You see, the goo, Miss Fly, was discovered by my old friend, Johann Sebastian Gumis. <laughs> he named it for his wife, Elsa. <laughs> but if it's called a goo, Miss Fly, how could it be named for his wife, Elsa? Yes. Yeah. Elsa Gomez, of course. Yeah. Well, Professor, uh, uh, just where in Africa was the Gomez fly found, huh? Oh, what a question. That's like asking, where was the horse fly found? Well, naturally, the horse fly was found on a horse, but where was the Gomez fly found? Where is on my friend Gomez? <laughs> Should we take care of it, Professor? I'm beginning to worry about it now. Well, Mrs. Bumstead, since the fly comes from Africa, yes. I suggest you put it in a warm container with wet moss and leaves for food and keep it down. Oh, we'll do that. Yes. And who knows? This fly might give out the mating call and zoom, you might have another goomish fly. <laughs> oh, smoke. Oh. $2,000. Come on, Blondie. This fly is going to have a little bit of Africa right here on Shady Lane Avenue. Even if I have to play the jungle Tom Toms myself. Well, there. The fly certainly ought to be happy now. Yeah. Large fish bowl and plenty of moss and nice green leaves. Yeah, and this perfume atomizer with warm water in it. You see, that, that makes the air nice and moist. Yeah. Just like Africa. Squirt them a little more, Dr. Livingston. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, here goes. <laughs> oh, 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 holy smoke. What's the matter, Dad? Look, look, look at what's happening to our goomus fly. Oh, oh, no. oh. We're cooked, sis. You said it, brother. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, the color's coming off of him. Yeah, look at that. The, the goomus is washing right off of him. And it looks very suspiciously like watercolor. Yeah. Alexander Bumstead? I cannot tell a lie, Mother. I did it with my little watercolor set. I, I painted the fly. And I helped him. You helped him? Well, what did you do? I held the fly. <laughs> and all this time we thought we had a very valuable fly. Oh, Alexander. I'm awful sorry, Pop. I didn't think it'd get to be such a big thing. I saw the same article in the Sunday paper, and I just painted a horse fly to look like the Goomer's fly. Well, why didn't you tell us sooner, Alexander? Oh, I feel like I just lost $2,000. Gosh, I wanted to tell you, but I don't know. I never could do it at the right time. Mr. Dinners was making such a fuss about yeah. it, and then the professor... Hey, 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 wait a minute. Have you got an idea, Dad? Oh, and how? Alexander, I'll forgive you if you paint the fly again. Now, Dagwood, what are you going to do? I'm going to call Mr. Dinners and do a little horse fly training right now. <laughs> I hate myself when I get these fiendish ideas. <laughs> oh, Cora. What do you want, hot shot? <laughs> oh, stop. Cora, I want you to call up Blondie and tell her you think I'm entitled to at least half of that goomish fly. In that case, I know the half you ought to get. <laughs> fly isn't yours, and you know it. I know, but I want to chisel in on it a little. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Oh, why, it's Dagwood. Hello, Dagwood. Uh, hello, Mrs. Dithers. Hello, Mr. Dithers. Mom said you swindler. Yeah? You ingrate. You outgrate. You downtrodden upstart. <laughs> you gibbering, jabbering jackass. Yeah. <laughs> 
sticks and stones, they break my bones, but names will never hurt me. <laughs> Mr. Ditters, everything you say about me is true. Huh? Yeah, you're right, J.C. I have been ungrateful. You've always been so swell to me. I'm ashamed of myself for catching the rarest fly in the world and not offering to share it with you. I hate myself. I hate you, too. <laughs> oh, Julius, let him go on. He can't be in his right mind. Why not? Because he said so many nice things about you. <laughs> Mr. Ditters, you've been a real pal to me, and I'm going to give you a half interest in the fly. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Oh, I feel so awful about the way I've treated you, Mr. Ditters. I just don't care what happens to the other half of the fly. Well, maybe you'd like to sell your half to me. Oh, no, it's worth quite a bit, and it wouldn't be fair to take that much money from you. All right, all right. I'll offer you less than it's worth, then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then how much? It's worth 500. I'll give you 250. 150. I mean, uh, 350. 200. 250. 100. Sold. <laughs> well, maybe I'm wrong, but that was the darndest bidding I ever heard. Well, let's go right over to your house. I want to see it first. Okay, okay but don't forget your checkbook. <laughs> Bum said, how do I know this Goomis fly is the real McCoy? We knew you'd think of that, Mr. Diddy. Yeah, so we asked an authority to come over and prove it to you. Uh, oh, Professor Hegelmeyer. This here, Mr. Bum said. <laughs> uh, Mr. Diddy, this is Professor Gustav Hegelmeyer. Of the Natural History Museum, Hegelmeyer. <laughs> yeah, well, I <laughs> Glad to know you, Professor Hailmeyer. Thank you. I'm glad to know me also. <laughs> Professor, is this fly Bum said has really a Goomis fly? There is no question about it. Then how the Dickens can you tell the difference? Maybe it's just an ordinary fly. There is always one sure way to tell the Goomis fly. Really? How? Well, you know how the ordinary house fly is all the time washing his feet? Yes. The Goomis fly is never washing his feet. <laughs> then how does he keep on clean? He don't walk in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, sure, it is ridiculous. <laughs> this is a scientific joke, Mr. Dizzle. <laughs> well, this Goomis fly better not be a joke, or Bumstead will regret the day he caught it. Hey, here you are. Here you are, Mr. Dizzle. Here's your bow, and there, look at that. The little Goomis fly, look at him. Oh, isn't he pretty? He couldn't be prettier if he were hand-painted. Yeah, not possibly. The beautiful specimen. Yeah. Well, I'll be leaving now. <laughs> Just think, the most valuable fly in the whole world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Mr. Ditters, you don't forget about that check. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I forgot to give it to you. Yeah. How could it have slipped my mind? Oh, I'll bet it was easy. <laughs> I mean, uh, here you are, Dagwood, $100. Oh, thanks, J.C. I hope you and the fly will be very happy, Mr. Ditters. You bet we will. I'm going to make a nice, juicy profit on him. Yeah, well, look out for that chair, Mr. Dithers. Oh, 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 oh. Are you all right, Mr. Dithers? Never mind me. Where's the fly? Yeah. Oh, it went out the door. Back to Africa. I do not know. Here, Goomis, wait for me. Oh, Goomis fly yeah. and all that money. Bob said, I think you put that chair there deliberately. No, 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 I didn't, Mr. Diddy. Two thousand dollars gone out the window. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. I, I can't stand to hear a man cry. Give Mr. Diddy's his money back, Dagwood. Oh, well, uh, uh, couldn't I watch him squirm just a little bit more? <laughs> oh, Dagwood. Okay. Okay. Well, here you are, J.C. Oh, Dagwood. Yeah. Blondie, 
Thank you so much. And Dagwood, you're back on the payroll again. Oh, thanks, Mr. Dillers. And I'm glad to give you back the hundred dollars that I keep pretending. Mm -hmm. It it wasn't a real Goomis fly. We like you too much, Mr. Dithers. We never would have cast your check. I know you wouldn't have. I was going to stop payment on it anyway. Blondie Show was heard in the United States over NBC, the national broadcasting company, and has been rebroadcast for our servicemen and women overseas by the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.